What's up, Tea Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All Tea, All Shade, Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 6 Reunion Part 2. Let's get into it because Part 2 was juicy. So Part 2 picks up where we left off last week with Kiki and Tisha going at it. And Kiki admits that she and her husband have cheated on each other. <laughs> she was like, and... Your point is, <laughs> she was like, at least I ain't no stupid, dumb trick. I ain't heard nobody call somebody a trick since I was 11. <laughs> trick used to be the word, honey. Then she said, nah, Tisha was like, you know, I ain't no dummy. You still married him. So who is the dummy? And Kiki was like, I did. Your head too dang on big to be so dang on dumb. And... So the cast at this point is still thinking like she actually paid for him to go on a date with another woman, like set it up, pay for it, everything. But then they realized that this was something that happened when she was like 19, 20 years old, when they was older, I mean, younger. And he'd asked her for some money. And that's when, after the fact, she found out that he had went out with somebody else and she ran up on him and it was a whole big old thing. So it was like, Tisha, girl, you are reaching, child. Bringing up some stuff that happened when this girl was literally a kid. The rest of the cast was like, oh, girl, bye. <laughs> so Tisha says that Kiki says she didn't talk to this guy who had the information that his ex or current girlfriend at the time was one of the women that had this threesome with Marceau. Um, I listened to, or I watched that video when Kiki posted it. And I just remember her saying in the video to the guy and the other, and her, um, hairstylist, makeup artist, whoever it was in the video along with them was like, you know, you need to tell Tisha, I don't want my name in this. I ain't did nothing. Like she was basically making sure that her name was cleared in all of this. Like I, it didn't come across to me. Like she was being malicious and trying to be funny and stir up drama. It was more so y'all need to let my cousin know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know pretty much how she's going to perceive it coming from me. That's how I took it. So Carlos says, Melody and Kimmy, do you feel, do you two feel like Tisha is in denial of what she's being told by Kiki? Child. One thing about this cast now, they so comfortable with each other that now they can have fun with it, baby. Ke Kimmy had her head down, child, like a little kid that's about to get a whooping. And Melody talking about some, Kimmy, you go. And she was like, uh-uh, Mel, you go, you go, you do it. Mm -mm. Nah, she was like, nah, girl, you do it. <laughs> and Tisha just sitting over there looking a dumb mess, just sitting up there looking like the Jolly Green Giant. I'm like, girl, oh, Lord, po thing, po thing, po thing. So Kimmy eventually says no. She doesn't think that. Mel was like, I just think when you decide to leave a marriage, you want something concrete, and I don't think that's what Tisha has right now. And I think that that's the case. I think that she's looking for co concrete evidence, black and white evidence. You know what I'm saying? Um, I guess, I mean, for me, if I was Tisha, even without having concrete evidence, you already knowing your heart of hearts, what's going on or what has happened. And then with just the things that he's done, the way that he's talked to her, treated her, his chauvinistic ways. And it's just too much for me, but you know, to each his own. So then the Kiki drug situation comes up. And Tisha is adamant that she's still using. And I didn't like that she stayed on that hill. Just basically like, I know for a fact she's using. I know for a fact she is. Like, I wish she would have tucked her tail between her legs and been like, hey, I was wrong. I thought at the time she was, but I was wrong. I hate that she was still accusing her of that. I, I really do. I hate that her and Marceau was still doing that. So Maurice doesn't think that Kiki is using, but thinks that she was looking for a moment throughout the season. And I can somewhat agree with that. I can. Um, Carlos points out the test should have been positive because she takes methadone. She was like, she didn't remember methadone being in there, but they played it back twice where Melody was reading out all of the drugs that it was being tested for. And she said methadone. 
So I don't know why it didn't turn up positive for that. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But um, Mel clarifies that Kiki did not know that she was going to be drug tested that day and that she, as well as the producers, went into the stall with her. So there was no chance of her, you know, using someone else's pee. And so if that was untrue, I'm pretty sure that the producers would have came out and said, no, that isn't true. Um, Kiki says that she's sober. Marceau and Tisha, like I said, are still adamant that she isn't. And Marceau continues to make allegations that in the past he's picked Kiki up off the street multiple times. <laughs> now, I remember in my interview with Kiki, she was like, I've always had a car. So why would you have to pick me up off the street? I don't know who to believe. We weren't there. I don't know. Um, Marceau then says with the whole crime stopper situation that she probably stole this lock to buy drugs. I don't know what type of lock that you can buy from a Home Depot or wherever store she was at that's that expensive that you're going to be able to buy pills with it. Like, what kind of lock was this? A lock for your house? Like, <laughs> I'm so confused. But um, I just wish that they would have been like, you know what, we were wrong about that. We thought we she was doing the time, but obviously we were wrong and just let it go. You know, I didn't think that that was fair to continue to accuse her of using. And like she was saying, I will take a test right now. You know, I don't personally think that she's using either. Um, I think that uh, she's in a good place with her sobriety. So, you know, we will see. So the Whitlows and the Fletchers come out. And um, I hated uh, Tiffany's outfit. All them necklaces was making my neck itch. Um, I thought that Miss Nail looked pretty. She looked really, really pretty and glamorous. And Chris, his his suit was just way too busy for me. It was just too much going on. You had the big bow tie that was giving me Django Unchained. Then the pattern. It was just a lot. Um, it's then Martell's segment. And when Carlos gets to describe in his segment, Martell was screwing up his face like, what? Like, <laughs> he did not like the words that were being used to describe what he had going on this season. So Carlos says, how do you feel when people question the validity of your relationship with Sheree? And Martell says that, you know, they stopped talking so he could focus on getting himself together. Okay child and i weigh 150 pounds <laughs> we all know that ain't true so martell downplays wanting to be with mel and i'm so sick of him in this mess like because it's obvious that you do you've made it well known that you do want to be with her so don't try to cap and act like it ain't true now so um carlo says do you feel you telling the world you're still in love with melody that she would take it and run with it and basically beat you over the head with it and he was basically jibber jabbering stuttering over his words and Marceau jumps in and was like or you'll get in trouble with your wife talking about Ariane and Martel was like what and Melody was like there you go thanks Marceau <laughs> so Carlos was like are you in a relationship with your child's mother Martel says no he's single I don't bit more believe that at all. Um, Marceau then says, does she think you're in a relationship? And he was like, no. So Melody was like, he lying because when my kids are there, she's there almost every day. And we know that to be true. We know that to be true because of that one live they did together at his new house. And she was talking about how she cooked for him every day and all of this type of stuff. So that's already been clarified right there. So, um, Carlos asks, Melody, does it hurt you that she's around your children? And Melody says, no, it doesn't hurt me. I am more so, I more so go into protective mode. I'm never going to trust someone who adored my family so much that they worked their A off to come between it. Of course, with the help of him, for me, knowing that they are around someone who has said such nasty and vile things about their mother, 
And Martell jumps in with an attitude and talking about some, imagine what the 11 babysitters you've had has said. And I'm like, how are you mad at her for speaking the truth? This woman has said nasty, vile things about her so any mother would be uncomfortable with their children being around somebody that you know does not like you and if you don't like me god knows what you would do to my kids you know what i'm saying so she had every right to say that and how you getting mad about that when you know it to be true so how you mad and why would you stick up for her in that instance you should have been like her feelings are 1000 percent valid but i'm here to say that the kids are 100% um, safe and protected and that she would not do such and such and such and such. But to sit up here and disregard her feelings and act like she reaching and lying or whatever the case may be was just so uh, beyond me. Like what? And then if y'all ain't together, why is you sitting up here um, getting the attitude and acting like male in the wrong and it's just like this is the reason why she left you in the first place because it's always been a bias there between her and arian where he will stick up for arian with the quickness honey but with male uh-uh no she got to fend for herself so melody was like who said multiple things about their father too talking about arian who is of course said horrible things about him too so once again if this person can say nasty things about me and you why would i feel comfortable having this woman around my kids and why would you so she then goes on to say you see how he defends her he's bringing something directly towards me when i'm talking about a person who has four years who has for years uh he's known try to torture and come between our marriage um dming me and he knows all of that so for you to defend her how dare you and i 1000 percent agree and i wish that somebody else on that stage would have backed her up on that like dog you tripping you 1000 percent are tripping like nah because that ain't even cool martel then lies and says that the 11 babysitters is in the court papers basically saying that it was validated that that was true and it was not Melody was like, I know it's in the paperwork the same way in the paperwork when you were asked if you were in a relationship with Sheree and you said it was a business arrangement. That's in the paperwork too, verbatim. You know, it's called the clerk typing. It's business. That's what you said. And see, this is why he need to learn how to leave that girl alone because she wasn't going to even out him during the segment when they were talking about Sheree. She kept her mouth shut she kept her mouth shut but he just wanted to keep on poking and you know lying and all of that type of stuff and she had to bust him out real quick he was like what that ain't true what what are you talking about huh she is lying she is lying <laughs> so martel was like so if i go get the paperwork and melody was like please do so martel jump up child up out his seat and run off the stage in his little toddler easter suit child the back of that blazer was up so high it literally was sitting at the top of his pants <laughs> of his waistline i was like why he got on one of tank blazers like what is going on so while he's backstage gathering his his paperwork child the rest of the cast is sitting on the uh, stage and Marceau was like, so you let us sit here and ask all these dang on questions about being a, in a business relationship and you knew and everybody started laughing and they realized that, yo, she wasn't going to even bust this dude out. She kept her mouth shut until he kept on messing with her. So Martell come back looking like a little angry bird with paperwork and she was like, you got the transcript. And he was like, oh, no. And she was like, yeah, exactly. So Martell tells him, you're a liar. You're such a liar. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this ain't night court. So Melody was like, I'm not a liar. I'll go and pay for the transcript to prove that you are by the time this airs. And I wish that she had done it. Don't know if she will do it, but I need for her to do it. So Martel was like, liar, liar, making me look horrible out here, making me look horrible on TV. And it's like, uh, sir, you did that on your own. You do not need help from her, child. Get out of here. Well, at this point, Carlos is tired of them arguing back and forth and was like, I'm so happy y'all moved apart from each other. 
And Melody says, you see how toxic it was in the house? And Martell Thomas said, it wasn't like this. And she said, yes, it was. That's why I beat your A that time. <laughs> and Martell Thomas said, let a man say something like that. <laughs> Because you got beat up. She went upside your head as you deserved it. So then Stormy Mama, Miss Betty, and her cousin Junior joined, child. And Junior, honey, came ready for the reunion, honey. He had on his Sunday's best. Junior came out there looking like a bad bitch. He looked like a majorette, child. <laughs> I don't know where he was going with them tassels. But you couldn't tell him nothing. So Carlos was like, what is it about Melody that you that made you feel like she wasn't a good friend to Stormy, Miss Betty. And she rep responds, the tweet says it was someone in her home recording her. And on the show, that someone in her home was Stormy. Melody says, I have been made aware that someone was recording me. And I said, this is why I don't allow people in my home because you never know. There was more than you in my home. Let's be clear. Stormy says, but when you were live tweeting the show, it did seem like you were insinuating that it was me. Melody says, but did I not come back and say, I'm not talking about the person that was in my home right then. Stormy says, you didn't do that until my mama had her blow up. Mel says, but why does she even have to blow up instead of you calling me and saying, Melody, they're coming for me? Stormy was like, I didn't have your number. So Miss Betty was like, you are in those groups and you could have said this is not what happened. You just let it ride. Stormy says they were directly under your post going in on me. They were calling Walmart trying to get my products taken off the shelves. Melody was like, I didn't know that. Stormy was like, you can say you didn't, but I know you did. You see everything, Melody. And this is my feelings on it. I think that Melody, in fact, did know that them people was coming for her. If I knew, she knew. And I don't even be following these people like that. So she knew. She knew. I just don't think that she cared enough to correct it because she don't like Stormy. Point blank and the period. She don't like Stormy. She don't care for Stormy. So why am I going to clarify anything to help her and protect her i think that's where mel was coming from do i think that that's wrong yes because that's somebody livelihood that was being messed with over some reality show mess you know it's nothing to say hey i wasn't talking about her y'all leave that lady alone um and they're not friends anymore that's obvious you know uh but i think that mel should have said something i really honestly do i do i think that that's that was wrong for her not to at least do that much you know so, um, where was I at? Miss Betty said, you made a tweet and didn't bother to go back and read any of the comments. And Melody was like, Miss Betty, honestly, you have enough going on in your family with your sister. And Betty was like, mind your business. You still arguing with this man over divorce that happened three years ago. Now, the first time she said it, Melody didn't hear her. So Mel was like, you're too old to have a problem with me. You're old enough to be my mother. You don't know me. And Bell Betty was like, you still argue with a man you've been divorced from for three years. And Melody said, what now? What? So I can hear you. And Stormy Mama was like, Stormy was like, Mama, please stop. She was like, Betty, stop, stop. And Miss Betty was like, you heard it. And Melody was like, I did not. Please repeat it. And Miss Betty screamed something back. <laughs> and Mel was like, see, she a demon. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! and i was like yeah girl you don't never need to make that face ever again child miss betty because miss betty got a face only your mother could love child and i know that stormy was embarrassed you can tell that she didn't like the fact that her mother was arguing back and forth with mel it's embarrassing you know what i'm saying it's one thing not to like somebody but to get involved in your daughter's business it's just too much it's just way too much go sit down somewhere please lady this is why we didn't like wanda because she's way too involved and one thing that i can say about miss van she don't get involved in this mess she stay out of it or whatever uh, we haven't even heard nothing from Martell mama no more, which is a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Keep your mamas, your mammas off the show. It's a reason why we only saw Marceau and mama, uh, Marceau and Mar Maurice mama one time. Like, no, they not having it. But um, I thought that reunion part one was super funny. It had a lot of super funny moments. Martell is a clown as always. And I will be doing a video uh today that'll be coming out 
where I give the real true tea on why Maurice, I mean, Maurice, Martell was arrested. Okay. So y'all make sure y'all check that video out. I'm going to give reunion part two and a, it was quite, quite, um, entertaining. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about it down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe and hit that notification bell button. I love you. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.